Welcome back to the Rock Stars. I'm Eric Boss, and the late great Tony Stark made his mark with Riri Williams Ironheart in Black Panther Wakanda Forever with some overt Iron Man nods, with Shuri identifying the schematics as, quote, Stark Tech, Riri's initial ascent and fall paralleling Tony's first real flight in the first Iron Man film, and even the signature Iron Man sound effect hidden in Riri's chest reactor. <laughs> But now with Ironheart star Dominique Thorne revealing Robert Downey Jr. called her to offer some words of wisdom, I'm thinking back on some of these clues from Wakanda Forever and what I saw in the Ironheart trailer in D23, and I'm realizing it might be possible that A, Tony Stark might have actually known Riri Williams, and B, the technological legacy that he left Peter Parker might have been something he actually intended Peter to share with another MIT student. That's right, Santa Stark wrote on the card that this PS5 is for you and your sister, so share, share. Upon the release of Wakanda Forever, Dominique Thorne told Screen Rant in an interview that she spoke with Robert Downey Jr. via FaceTime when a castmate from Ironheart who had worked with Robert Downey Jr. connected the two of them. Now, you may have wondered who this mystery connecting actor was, and I actually think it was Alden Ehrenreich, who was reported by Deadline last summer to play some role in Ironheart and would have been filming at the same time Christopher Nolan's upcoming Oppenheimer film, along with Robert Downey Jr. and pretty much everyone else in Hollywood. That cast is huge. Anyway, Thorne said Robert Downey Jr. had some beautiful words about how much he believes that Riri Williams should always be her own person, her own thing, that this legacy is headed in the right direction and all the beautiful encouraging things that you hope to hear from the Iron Man himself. Such a wholesome sentiment between actors, but is this reflecting a mentorship that could have existed between the characters of Tony Stark and Riri Williams in the MCU? Did these two ever cross paths? Well, if we assume that Riri Williams did not blip, yes, it is not only possible, but actually likely that Tony Stark knew who Riri was. Now, when we went into Wakanda Forever, I expected Riri Williams to be a wannabe Avenger in the style of Kamala Khan, someone inspired by Iron Man and the other Avengers to build their own suits, but not someone who actually actually knew or met the Avengers at any point, at least not at first. But then when Riri takes Shuri and Okoye to a warehouse, Shuri observes schematics on Riri's board that Shuri identifies as Stark Tech. Now, whether it was proprietary information that Riri was somehow able to acquire or tech that she was able to reverse engineer on her own so well that it looked like the real thing to Shuri, this means that Riri was able to accomplish in a few years what the world's best engineers and weapons contractors during the Iron Man 2 era were unable to do. And what's interesting is Tony actually did say during that Senate testimony in Iron Man 2 that most imitators were years away from building their own Iron Man suits. Yeah, I'd say uh, most countries five, ten years away. Hammer Industries, 20. Aha! 10 years away, ended up being roughly the amount of time for Riri to emerge on the world stage with her own Iron Man style suit. Now, crucial to the possible connection between Tony Stark and Riri Williams is MIT. This is Riri's current school and Tony Stark's alma mater. And we've spoken before how in Civil War, Tony announced a new research grant program for all MIT students. As of this moment, every student has been made an equal recipient of the inaugural September Foundation grant. As in, all of your projects have just been approved and funded. Reframe the future! Inaugural means that this grant is gonna get reapproved every year from there forward. So even though in 2016, Riri probably would have been too young to be an active MIT student at that point, still, every year after that, even after Tony's death, his estate likely continues to pay for all these projects. The Ironheart trailer that hasn't been released wide yet, but I was able to get a preview look at it at D23, confirms that Jim Rash is returning from this scene in Civil War as an MIT administrator. So Tony's September Foundation funding is likely to come up in the Ironheart Heart series. But there was another interesting line from Riri in Wakanda Forever. She says, there's an entire YouTube channel dedicated to sightings of me, which reminded me of how Tony Stark was initially able to find Peter Parker, which is something I was able to figure out in past videos. Civil War and Homecoming show how amateur footage of Peter's heroics ended up online, probably shamelessly uploaded by Peter himself since the cameras are always strategically placed, and Tony was able to track down Peter from there. I think there may have been a similar recruitment and mentorship process between Tony and Riri Williams. And why do I think that? Well, it all goes back to that note that Tony left with his Edith glasses in Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, it can be hard to watch actors and not immediately think, hey, I'd like to have gorgeous skin and hair just like they do. Well, with Geology, you can. Geology is a four-time award-winning personalized skincare company recognized in Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men Grooming Awards with over 6,000 five-star reviews. And they've recently expanded to offer products for, well, pretty much whatever you need. Like if you need hair care, use Geology's Co-Wash. It's a specially formulated cream cleanser that removes buildup and cleanses the hair without the big lather or harsh ingredients of typical shampoo. And for the rest 
do your shower routine, you can use their body washes. They're free of harsh ingredients, smell great, and are refillable. And for after the shower, protect your skin from environmental stressors with vitamin C plus E ferulic serum. Keep your skin looking young and healthy. And then a bit of the dermatologist tested aluminum free deodorant that quite honestly smells great. Right now for a limited time, Geology is hooking our audience up with an absolutely insane offer. If you use the code new rockstars, they will give you an additional 70% off their award winning skincare trial set. This discount stacks on top of their current sale prices. And there's also an additional bonus offer on one of their brand new skin, hair and body products of your choice when you add it to your trial. With the holidays right around the corner, Geology has you covered. Check out their awesome gift sets featuring all of your favorite Geology products. To get started, just click the link in the description, take a 30 second diagnostic quiz, and their team of dermatologists will design a personalized routine just for you that ships directly to your door. He wrote, for the next Tony Stark, I trust you. P.S. Say Edith. Signed, T.S. And there are two issues I've always had with these. One, if Tony did not know that Peter had come back until the middle of the Battle of Earth and Endgame, when would he have had time to write this note and make these arrangements with Edith? How could Tony have arranged this with Nick Fury when Nick Fury was also tested during the blip? Another person that Tony didn't know he'd be able to bring back. Was this some kind of will and testament contingency Tony just had in place? Sure, I guess you could say Tony pre-recorded some more hologram messages to give all these instructions post-mortem. It just would have been a lot for him to think through. He starts Endgame completely completely happy to be in retirement. It seems like they're planning for the time heist took a couple weeks. Sure, maybe Tony made some arrangements then. It's just weird that he had all this figured out for Peter Parker, someone that Tony assumed was dead for good. But the second issue is the note itself. Tony does not address it to Peter. He addresses it to the next Tony Stark. Would that really be how Tony addresses Peter? I mean, didn't Tony always want Peter to be better than him? This kind of just sounds like an inside joke Tony might have had with someone else. And yes, we should also note that this whole handoff was a weird mission that Fury gave to the scroll, Talos. And we don't really know if we can trust what the hell they're doing in Far From Home. Stark left these for you. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Stark said you wouldn't get that because it's not a Star Wars reference. We gave the glasses to Parker about a week ago, like he said and uh, really, really quite touching. Now, they also said that Stark left them for Peter, but we don't really know that. It's just unlikely that Tony would have had time to tell Fury that, and it's unlikely that he would have made arrangements to bequeath tech to a kid he had no way of knowing would be back alive in the world to receive this. Now, yes, you're gonna say when Peter Parker put on those Edith glasses, they scanned his eye and it's directly encoded to him. I think it's most likely that Tony just had an inner circle of people where if any of them put on these glasses, Edith would be like, okay, yeah, you're in too. I mean, let's be real. Peter just kind of gave a voice command to him it off to Quentin Beck, the security features weren't exactly airtight here. We just have to remember, in the opening act of Endgame, from Tony's point of view, Peter was gone. Tony spent those entire five years moving on with his life. But while Tony didn't have his protege Peter Parker during the blip, we know Tony was busy during the blip. Busier than we thought. He helped Bruce Banner build a whole gamma lab in Mexico. He spent a lot of that time drinking, talking about Cap. He didn't spend the full five years kicking back on the farm with Pepper. He continued working on various projects. And I think one of those projects was to find a new protege, to offload some of his engineering knowledge to another bright mind that he found on social media and hooked up with a letter of recommendation, a scholarship to MIT, and a grant. The genius from Chicago, Riri Williams. Ironheart. I think he was the one who hooked up Riri with authentic Stark Tech schematics. That's why her chest reactor warms up with the same Iron Man suit sound. And I really think the Edith glasses weren't necessarily specifically for Peter Parker. Maybe if Riri had put on those glasses, she also would have been able to command all the Stark drone fleet. I mean, remember, as Tony said to the MIT students, re frame the future. I think Tony's ultimate hope was that maybe somehow his sacrifice could bring back Peter Parker and that kid could get him to MIT where he would have an older sister waiting for him. A friend to Peter that Rhodey and Steve and Bruce were to Tony. Now folks, I'm not theorizing this to say Riri couldn't have built Iron Man tech herself. She obviously can. She's brilliant and I think that's why Tony recruited her. I'm also not theorizing this to take anything away from Tony's relationship with Peter. I just think Tony Stark was a lonely know-it-all and he loved finding other smartest people in the room to give them the tools they need to succeed. So why not give this dead guy more friends? You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.